In Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn series, a person can be born with one ferrochemical ability and one allomantic ability. Those lucky people are known as twinborn, and in certain circumstances, their ferrochemical ability and their allomantic ability use the same metal. When that's the case, they can do what's known as compounding, and they can increase their ferrochemical ability by an order of magnitude. In this video, we're going to rank all the different metals based on how useful they are when compounded. This video was highly requested by quite a few of you guys down in the comments section. Before we get into the tier ranking, I want to announce that I launched channel memberships. By becoming a channel member, you not only support the channel and help me continue pumping out Cosmere content, but you also get access to all kind of amazing perks, like loyalty badges next to your username, custom emojis you can use in the comments section of my videos, early access to videos, and a whole bunch of other perks. Consider becoming a member. I'll link it down in the description of this video. All right, so for this tier list, I added a new tier. So S is no longer the highest. We now have busted because some of these metals, when they're compounded, are absolutely busted and overpowered. First up, we have gold. So a gold compounder compounds health. So they can store a little bit of health. Let's say they lay in bed all day, being extremely sickly, just storing health for 10 hours. They can then burn that gold mine at a later time and get 10 times that amount of health back. So they could basically get 100 hours worth of health storage out of that metal mine, even though they only stored the health for 10 hours. So we actually see a gold compounder in uh, the Alloy of Law. Miles 100 Lives, he is a gold compounder and he does some crazy things. So we actually get his perspective here. This is Alloy of Law, chapter 11. We have Miles puffed on his cigar thoughtfully. As always, he was drawing upon his gold mind, invigorating himself, refreshing his body. He never felt sick, never lacked energy. He still had to sleep and he still grew old. But other than that, he was practically immortal so long as he had enough gold. And then again here, the Alloy of Law, chapter 15, we have another passage from his perspective. He never got headaches, never felt tired, never had sore muscles, never dealt with colds or pain. On a whim, he took hold of the banister and swung over, dropping to the floor some 20 feet below. For a brief moment, he knew that sense of freedom. Then he hit. One of his legs tried to break. He recognized the slight pop, but the bone's fractures re-knit as quickly as they broke, so it never fully snapped. Cracks opening on one side, but resealing on the other. And then here, uh, chapter 19 of Alloy of Law, we have Shooting Miles was, of course, useless. The man could survive a dynamite explosion at close range. He could take a few shotgun blasts. Fortunately, Miles' body obliged him by healing itself and spitting out the birdshot. So yeah, gold is absolutely busted. As a gold compounder, as long as you have enough gold, you pretty much have a healing factor of the same level as Wolverine. I mean, it's pretty insane. Next up, we have aluminum. So an aluminum compounder can compound identity. This one is kind of weird. I don't know exactly what that would mean. So in the Ars Arcanum of the Lost Metal, we get this information. Truth self fairings can store their spiritual sense of identity in an aluminum metal mind. This is an art rarely spoken of outside of terrorist communities, and even among them, it is not yet well understood. Aluminum and a few of its alloys are alimentically inert, they cannot be pushed or pulled, and can be used to shield an individual from emotional alimancy. So we don't get really any information on what ferrochemical aluminum does. So here we'll read from the Copper Mind. By storing identity in aluminum and then filling another metal mind, they create an unkeyed metal mind that can be used by any ferrochemist. One example is in the Bands of Mourning. Wax finds a gold bracelet filled with healing power that Wayne, a gold fairing, can access. Wax cannot. Through a method that has not yet been fully revealed, but which builds on unkeyed metal mines, it is also possible to create an unsealed metal mine of investiture, which anyone can use to access ferrochemical power. The Southern Scadrial Medallions are an example. So aluminum ferrochemy seems pretty useful if you're trying to make unsealed metal mines like those Southern Scadrian medallions. But if you're compounding it, I don't know what it would do. So I'm going to put this pretty low. Yeah, I'm going to put this in C tier until we know more about it. Next up, we have bend alloy. Bend alloy ferrochemists can store calories in a metal mine. So they can just gorge themselves with food and store all those calories and they won't get full as long as they're actively storing. 
they can do the same thing with fluids. So I guess they could just be chugging water and storing all of that, all the fluids into a metal mine. So if you're compounding this, these calories or these fluids, you could just eat like a, a single meal and then uh, compound it and go for, I don't know, maybe a couple days without food. But as one of the guys in the Discord server pointed out to me, some of these metals can be used to achieve roughly the same effect, even if you don't have the ability to compound. What I mean is that a bend alloy ferrochemist could pretty much just mukbang, and let's say they eat 20,000 calories in one sitting, and then they could go maybe like 10 days, if you, you know, 2,000 calories a day uh, without food, and that's all done without compounding. So yeah, compounding bend alloy, although it's pretty cool, it's not as useful as some of these other metals. So I'm gonna put this in, for now it's going in B tier. I might change the order as we go. Next up we have brass. So compounding brass lets you make a whole bunch of warmth. So this one's another similar one where it's actually really easy to store warmth. Maybe you could sit by a fire or go into a sauna and just store all of that excess body heat into a brass mine. And then you could store up a whole bunch of it really quickly. But yeah, if you're compounding, you could, you know, store heat for like an hour when you're next to a fire and then you can compound that and have 10 hours worth of body heat. Um, but yeah, I think this is very similar to bind alloy. So that's going in B tier for now. All right, the next metal is bronze. Bronze lets you compound wakefulness. I actually like this one quite a bit. You could have a full night's sleep storing your wakefulness for eight hours, and then you can compound it, and you could have roughly 80 hours of wakefulness. That sounds pretty good to me. I just imagine how many videos I could pump out when I'm just running on my wakefulness from my bronze mind. So for me, this is going S tier. Next up, we have cadmium. Cadmium allows you to compound breath. Now this one seems pretty useful as well. So imagine this scenario. You're storing your breath. While you're actively storing, you're hyperventilating because your body isn't getting enough air, right? You do that for 10 minutes and then you can compound it and get 100 minutes worth of breath back. So you could go, what is that, an hour and 40 minutes without breathing? That's pretty useful. This is where it gets hard because this is quite... Oh man, I think that I this is gonna have to go S tiers also. Next up, we have chromium. A chromium twin born can compound fortune. Fortune is another one of these ferrochemical abilities that aren't well understood. Let's look at the Ars Arcanum again. So chromium fairings can store fortune in a chromium metal mine, making themselves unlucky during active storage and can tap it at a later time to increase their luck. So that's one definition of what fortune does, but I have a couple of wobs, words of Brandon that we'll look at as well. So in this word of Brandon from Oathbringer Chicago signing back in 2017, Brandon says, the other thing is I knew I needed some good foreshadowing of fortune for people to be able to kind of see the future or versions of the future for the whole Cosmere to work. Uh, here, he's not really talking about luck at all. He's talking about being able to see the future or different versions of the future. And then over here in this wob from Arcanum Unbounded Fort Collins signing in 2016, this is a paraphrase, so take it with a grain of salt. Somebody asks him, you've mentioned before that Hoyd ends up where he needs to be. Brandon says, yes, and usually without knowing why. The questioner says, is Chromium involved in that? And Brandon says, yes. Well, he's not necessarily using Chromium, but the under underlying mechanic yes so yeah based on that information it does sound like it does it involves luck somewhat so in hoyd's case i mean he just kind of can stumble around and end up where he needs to be even though he doesn't know why so i mean i guess he kind of can predict the future in a way but uh but at the same time it, it sounds like he kind of goes with the flow and just ends up wherever he needs to be <sighs> this one is a hard one to rank if you do think about it from a luck standpoint, then somebody that's compounding fortune could be like the luckiest person ever. I like to think of just, I don't know, a complete klutz stumbling through life. So imagine a chromium compounder. They're just constantly drawing on their fortune and they're, they're a klutz though, and they're stumbling through life. They trip on their shoestring, fall out into the middle of the road. And instead of getting hit by the speeding car, that car has some kind of engine malfunction right at the right moment. And they slow to a stop right before hitting the person. Um, or, you know, just a whole bunch of very lucky and unlikely situations happening to this person all the time. And in that sense, it reminds me of uh, Taviran from The Wheel of Time, if you've ever read that series. If you haven't, you should. Brandon wrote the last three books. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, oh man, 
once again super useful regardless of um if it lets you see the future or if it just makes you extremely lucky it's very very useful I'm, i'll have to put it up here and busted all right next up we have copper copper twin born can compound memories i don't know what that would do though that seems kind of pointless so copper ferrochemists store their memories kind of siphon them out of their head out of their own mind and store it into the copper mind and they basically forget what they were just thinking about when they do that and then at a later time they can pull it back from that metal mind and it will be as crisp and clear as if they had just thought about it or just read whatever it was that they stored in there so compound a memory what would that even do i i kind of think that it just wouldn't work i mean unless could it add detail to your memories somehow let me know what you think compounding copper would do down in the comments um until i see it on page i'm gonna have to put this one down here in c tier i just realized i mixed these tiers up hang on these are supposed to be d tier I can't alphabet apparently. Yeah, but these are both going down here in D tier. All right, the next metal we have is Duralumin. Duralumin twin born can compound connection. From the lost metal Ars Arcanum, Duralumin fairings can store spiritual connection in a Duralumin mind, reducing other people's awareness and friendship with them during active storage, and can tap it at a later time in order to speedily form trust relationships with others. All right, so if you're compounding Duralumin, you store your connection for a short amount amount of time and people don't really they're not aware of you they don't notice you during that time and uh friends forget that, they, that you're friends with them they forget who you are but then whenever you compound it you're gonna be like one of the most charismatic people ever like everybody's just gonna want to be your friend instantly that sounds really useful and i like how you could use it as basically a switch you can just store it whenever you want if you don't want to be noticed if you don't feel like socializing but as soon as you feel like i don't know going out to some kind of event or or maybe a bar you can just start drawing on that connection and instantly everybody wants to come up and talk to you They're, you're the coolest person there so this one's really nice i i want to necessarily say it's busted but i think it does have to go s tier all right it's going top of s tier for me next up we have electrum electrum twin born can compound determination from the Orz Arcanum, we have Electrum fairings can store determination in an Electrum metal mind, entering a depressed state during active storage, and can tap it at a later time to enter a manic phase. So to me, it sounds like you could feel very down about yourself and don't and basically have no confidence for a short amount of time and then compound that determination to be on top of the world. You can just have insane belief in yourself. And I think that's really cool. I mean, it could help you in pursuing goals. In my opinion it's not as useful as wakefulness so i'm actually going to put it down here in a tier and also I, i'm going to i'm going to move wakefulness up so bronze is moving up in front of cadmium next up we have iron iron twin born can compound physical weight so you can make yourself lighter for a time and then compound that physical weight and you can make yourself like extremely heavy. All right, so we've seen Wax in Alloy of Law Chapter 9 use a whole bunch of uh, iron ferrochemy at once. So Waxilium drew into himself weight he'd stored in his metal mines across days spent going around at three quarters weight. He became heavy as a boulder, then as heavy as a building, then heavier. All this weight was focused on one small section of the floor and then the floor caves in the roof of a building. So that wasn't even with compounding and he was able to make himself that heavy all in a split second. So if you're compounding, you could, I mean, you could probably make yourself way heavier than that even. How useful is that though? I guess it depends what you're doing. You could be like the best sumo wrestler ever seen on the face of the earth if you were uh iron compounder like nobody would be able to move you uh other than that i don't know there's not a whole lot of uses that i could see myself using it for this is going b tier and i reassessed bend alloy and brass are coming down to c tier just because it's so easy to store them up that compounding even though it does make it uh easier it's not a huge difference between just being a normal ferrochemist in these metals and being able to compound these metals next up we have nicrosil Nicrosil twin born can compound investiture. This is another one that's not really well understood. Out of the Ars Arcanum, we have Nicrosil fairings can store investiture in a Nicrosil metal mind. This is a power that very few know anything about. Indeed, I'm certain the people of Terrace 
don't truly know what they are doing when they use these powers. From the Copper Mind, we have a soul bearer storing investiture stores their ability to use their investiture. Therefore, a soul bearer could store their ability to use ferrochemy and another person tapping it would be turned into a temporary ferrochemist who has the ability to fill a metal mind, but it would have to be an unkeyed metal mind in that instance. Among other things, a nicrosil mind can be used to store the divine breath of the returned and the ability to use various surges of the knight's radiant. Filling a nicrosil mind as fast as possible hides a person from an awakener's life sense. So some of these are pulled from wobs and not actually out of the text. So yeah, I mean, you can store uh, various types of investiture uh, from different magic systems and things, but you have to have access to that investiture before you can actually store it. I mean, it has to go down here in D tier. Next up, we have Pewter. Pewter, twin born, can compound physical strength. This one seems pretty useful. Uh, so in the case of compounding, if you stored your strength in the metal mine for an hour you could retrieve that strength at the same rate for 10 hours time so you could basically make yourself like double as strong for 10 hours whenever you only stored for an hour pretty useful if you ask me so is this one busted or is it just s tier i think it has to go up here and busted Next up, we have Steel. Steel Twinborn can compound physical speed. This one is very, very useful. So you can make yourself slow. During that time, you're gonna feel like you're moving through molasses. Every movement will feel extremely slow. But then whenever you tap it, you can be extraordinarily fast. So in the Well of Ascension, chapter 19, we see the aftermath of Sazed using a whole bunch of steel ferrochemy. Five months worth of storing, of spending every fifth day draining of speed, my body moving as if impeded by a thick molasses, and now it's all gone. The loss had purchased something valuable, however. In just six days of travel, using steel mines on occasion, he had traveled the equivalent of six weeks worth of walking. So yeah, you can cover a lot of ground when you're using steel ferrochemy. Says it also says that speed is one of the most difficult ferrochemical attributes to store up. All right, so yes, um, compounding Physical speed is extremely useful. Oh, we also see Bleeder use it in Era 2. Compounding steel is absolutely busted. But where at in this busted category? I think I'm going to have to put it in front of Fortune. No, I'm going to put it in front of Physical Strength. Next up, we have Tin. Tin Twinborn can compound their senses. So if you're a Tin Ferrochemist, you can store a single sense in a Tin Mind. So you need a different Tin Mind for each since compounding your senses would be kind of weird i guess you could have extremely good eyesight and plus you could just have a, a whole bunch of that sense stored up and you would barely ever have to go with that sense diminished oh that's pretty good i could see it being useful it's not busted though i don't even think i would put it in s tier so it's going in a tier all right next up we have zinc zinc twinborn can compound mental speed this one seems very busted you can make yourself uh basically dumb for a very short amount of time and then compound that mental speed you stored up and just use that to constantly just be on point I mean, your mind's working overtime. I mean, it, it seems like it would basically raise your IQ. So yeah, this one is absolutely busted. Oh man, I don't know. It, it, it could almost go ahead of health because you're just walking around as a super genius at all times, basically. Health is still more busted. All right, last metal. This one isn't even one of the basic metals. It's one of the god metal alloys. So it's ATM from era one, which was kind of retconned later. Uh, Brandon said it's not pure ATM. It's pure ATM and Electrum alloyed together. Uh, the, this type of ATM Twinborn is able to compound youth. And we see the Lord Ruler using this. He would have to spend long amounts of time being extremely old, and then he would be able to compound all that youth that he stored up to appear like he's 20 years old. All right, so here's a wob about the Lord Ruler compounding ATM. Uh, Ferrochemy is about multipliers. The more the Lord Ruler aged, the less multiplier he could store in his metal mind. And the more he aged, the more he would need to compound to stay alive. There could exist an upper bound to the amount of time the Lord Ruler could survive off this trick. So we know that um, compounding ATM can extend your life greatly. I mean, the Lord Ruler was over a thousand years old but it does have an upper limit. In Mistborn Era 2, Marsh is still alive because he is compounding ATM. So he's like 300 and some years old at that point. So yeah, it, it is good. It's um 
useful. Uh, I actually like it quite a bit, to be honest. It's definitely going up in busted, but I'm going to put it in front of chromium and behind zinc. That's my final ranking of all the metals when you're looking at them from the perspective of a compounder. By the way, these graphics I made for this video, as well as the cards from the Allomancy and Ferrochemy tier list videos, are available to both channel members and patrons at the Arcanist tier or higher. I'll put a link to both of those down in the description below. Also, join the new Discord channel to discuss all things Cosmere related. We already have almost 40 members now, and I just launched it about a week ago. Let me know in the comments what tier list you want to see next. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe.